the Mishcon Academy Digital Sessions. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Alex Rhodes, the head of Mishcon Purpose, um, and I'll be your host today. This one is the second um, in our 2021 Purpose Matters series. And today, um, we're going to talk about the growing importance of purpose in private equity. For several years now, private equity houses have been responding to investor demands to take account of environmental, social and governance or ESG criteria in their policies. Of course, the industry is also uh, having to respond to new legal and regulatory requirements which are emerging. Now, understanding the developing regulatory environment is critical because it's fast moving, but it's also complex. Perhaps the most interesting development uh, is where some in private equity are changing the business paradigm and not looking from an ESG perspective of risk, but rather through the lens of opportunity. Um, and they are actively embracing purpose-led business as a route to value creation. I'm really excited today to be joined by Tracy Huggett, the managing partner of the Future Business Partnership and head of Mishcon Private Equity, Nadim Mir. Tracy, um, thank you for joining us. Um, you've got 20 years of uh, private equity experience working at some of the big established houses uh, across Europe and you've now co-founded the Future Business Partnership which is a purpose-led private equity business um, where you're managing partner. And I thought to start us, I'd ask you, what's your mission? Um, we are a new private equity fund that only invests in the best sustainable and ethically minded B2C and B2B consumer businesses in Europe. And um, our mission is to make money by doing good. So purpose is at the center of our investment strategy and ethics are at the center of our business model. Our return objectives are commensurate with the top quartile private equity returns for mid-market growth equity and buyout shops in Europe. We don't see a conflict at all between profit and purpose. We see the opposite. Um, is, it, is it just a, a, a sort of type of brand, do you think? Or, is it, or do you think all businesses are, are, are moving in this way? I think uh, all are, but it has to start somewhere. And, um, and actually the consumer is driving a lot of what we're seeing, uh, the individual. You know, we, we're in the information age. We're all aware uh, now more than we've ever been before. And, um, and of course, um, the, the, the share of wallet is moving to a, a, a much more conscious consumer. Nadim, it sort of chimes very much with, with our view of the world um, at, at, at Mishcons, I, I know, but does what Tracy's saying reflect what, what you're seeing in the market? We've been banging the drum for quite a few years now. Um, and over that time, there's been a slow but steady shift in this direction that we've we've seen. Um, but I really feel like in the last year with the pandemic, it's given a lot of businesses pause for thought, time to reevaluate their purpose. And many have come to the conclusion that business as usual is no longer an option. So I think last year in terms of the entrepreneurs, founders, and a lot of businesses that we've come across, the, the shift in that direction, that, that direction of travel seems to have reached some sort of tipping point. Nadim, you mentioned a slow and steady shift. Um, you know, this is, um, you know, ab absolutely the case. I mean, you know, when we look at some of our core segments like ethical food and drink, you know, this has been growing at 15% per annum over the last 20 years. But, you know, there are some acceleration of trends and not just linked to COVID. For example, vegan, uh, such a good example. This was niche like two or three years ago, um, you know, and it's gone mainstream. It's because people are really caring about climate change and they're really caring about animal welfare. I mean, I was delighted to see, and I know we've spoken about this already, Nadine, but um, you know, B Corp aisles um, are now open in, in Boots and, and Ocado. B Corps are defined as businesses that meet the highest standards of verified, so actual verified social and environmental performance. So you know, these big retailers are acknowledging their customers are looking for these products. If purpose and if purpose and profit aren't 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 juxtaposed but actually are aligned, how do you how, how do you how do you do that? If we look at um, consumer businesses that are led with superior um, ethics, these brands are enjoying a much higher customer retention and loyalty. So uh, you know higher lifetime value, uh, and also lower customer acquisition costs and more efficient marketing. 
And it's an important point when one ponders how the most successful purpose-led brands, uh, you know, we all know them, Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, these are the most successful financially uh, and best known purpose-led brands. And, and these businesses have never taken a, a dime from private equity. When we look at how we structured ourselves, it was really important for us to demonstrate to these brands, these, eth- these brands where this is so much part of their business and their business proposition, that we were ethically aligned. Um, you know, we are a B Corp ourselves. Um, so from inception, we have been able to show that we're ethically certified. Um, you know, we care about inclusivity. Uh, so we're a diverse team. Um, we care about transparency. So we're on shore. You know, we wanted to make sure that we were easily recognizable to these leading, leading and the best ethical and, and, and sustainable consumer brands. So this is going to be important for a founder that uh, doesn't want to take on capital or sell their business to, um, to a partner that is not, uh, who's going to ask them to sacrifice their values or their legacy. Um, there's so much pressure for people to be behaving in a certain way. The risk of greenwash is enormous. Yes. I mean, when you're, when you're trying to take the approach that you do and you're looking at businesses, how do you, how do you get under the skin and really understand them in that way? We find that the, the, the B Corp, the B Impact Assessment, um, is actually a very useful window into the brand's ethical and sustainable DNA. It looks across the business, not just at the product. It looks at its supply chain. It looks at its work environment. It looks at how it gives back to community. Um, you know, it, it's comprehensive. I mean, Nadim, we're, we're, we're big fans of B Corp, of course. How, how are companies using the frameworks to get ready for investment? You know, how, how are you and your team um, helping companies to sort of pivot? It's hard for us. I don't think we as lawyers um, can go and convince an entrepreneur they need to go down this route and then they can have loads of PE people chasing after them, even though that might actually be true, but no one's going to believe me. When they've had that kind of come to Jesus moment um, and, and, and they're, they're in that zone, and there's plenty of things that, that, can be, that they can do with a business and that we can do to help, whether it's guiding them through elements of the the B impact assessment that that Tracy mentioned, if they're having to review their supply chains, um, put in certain policies regarding their employees' structures for employee employee ownership, there's lots and lots of things that that we can do. We've been using um, the B impact assessment within our own firm um, as a as a tool as a process um, to to review our business. And the way that we the way that we operate it, but it's really interesting um, the prompts for things that you that you notice, um, and uh, the the key thing I suppose for us was thinking about impact. Tracy, you're, when you're using the, um, the 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 you know this this process, what is it that you're um, what is it that you're looking for in the in companies? We say that we partner with the best um, when it comes to sustainability, but really the pace and direction of improvement is just as important as the starting point. So they don't have to be the best at every aspect of sustainability at all. We have an impact plan agreed uh, and the di- direction of travels sort of set with our, with our partners before we invest. Um, and upgrading uh, ethics over, the, over the, the life of the investment is really, really important for us. Um, and also, you know, by, in, uh, by um, embedding that um, in the culture of the organization and also to structure the incentives around it throughout the organization, it's amazing the results that you can have in moving businesses forward on impact. But so, so both sort of perfor- performance, you know, they have, they have to be a leader and transformational or rate of change are, are, are important. I mean, are, are they equally important? Is one more important than the other or? The need or the priority to continue to improve um, and, and that this is a, a, a really important part of the business is, is really the, the, the most important for us. We link our carry, our carried interest, which is a commission we earn on, on the capital gain we make to not only delivering um, uh, financial return, but also uh, progress on environmental and social uh, impact. So, you know, we, we, this commitment, this buy-in with us to uh, continue to improve um, and, and have results. So you only get paid if your bet if the company you invest in one does well financially but also if it improves uh, yeah. in, in terms of ESG criteria this is the moment to really lead um, and we think no 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 way is better than actually uh, making a promise that uh, people know we're going to keep Nadim this 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 whole point around speed around the, the the trajectory of change it feels like as you, I think you said earlier you know there's sort of we, we've come to a turning point or a tipping point 
what is it that you think has 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 sort of underpinned that change? What what has changed? I think what's changed is that the the, the idea that purpose will make a business more profitable has become mainstream. As an example, if you look at the announcement that came from the business roundtable like almost two years ago now, a, a very bold statement to say that we can't carry on with business as usual. We've got to look beyond shareholder primacy as the driving force behind business. So if it's the mainstream investors, are, are we at the point where, where this is just all investing? Or are we still on a on a transition there, okay. do you think? We are both talking to kind of the, the main primary fund of funds teams as well as the impact allocations within those teams. So I mean we're talking to both. Um, so I think that you know there is a there is an increasing presence of, of impact as as a as an alternative within these big funds, but but certainly not in all that we're talking to. Nadine, you know, reputation obviously is a is a is such an important you know, thing for, for 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 everybody involved are um, some of your clients. You know, the the owners, the owner managers, um, uh, saying, "Hang on a minute, this is this is this is my business. This is what it stands for." And the conversation is 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 possibly slightly different when they're going looking for for capital. It's just generally become harder for for, for P houses. I it's becoming easier for good businesses to pick and choose which P investor they're going to partner with. That's going to be increasingly the case uh, when you're looking at um, impact too, because if the business has got a choice, um, they're going to choose the the right kind of investor that suits their their, their values. Um, and if you've built purpose into your business model um, and then you sell out to an investor or a corporate that has completely different values, you're going to damage your business. Tracy, big bad private equity and compatibility and alignment, all of this stuff um, is, is, is long term. Is there a conflict there in terms of short termism in the business cycle and long termism in, in terms of what's trying to be achieved? You know, when you build a brand and and you allow it uh, enough time to reach its full potential, this this takes time. And and locking in future proofing these businesses from an ethical standard point uh, point of view, so that you're confident that they can continue to flourish from an impact point of view long after you're gone. This takes time, exactly as, as you say. But we don't see this as being incompatible with our um, our fund uh, maturity. Um, we see ourselves as patient capital, so we will we will adjust according to each situation. There's a lot of chat at the moment about company law, purpose. Should the should the law around corporates and corporate purpose change? I mean, where where is that argument going, and 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 what do you think? In the US, for B corps, what they did was they went round state by state and they changed the law in every state. And so if you're a B Corp, you incorporate as a completely different type of legal entity. The UK, um, obviously, it's really different. We did things a bit differently, which what the, the, the decision was around B Corps anyway, was to layer some additional specific language called the B Corp legal test on top of the existing Companies Act wording. Um, the, the B Corp language changes it, removes, removes shareholder primacy. Um, but that's something that you have to build into your articles um, yourself. Th- there seems to be, or well, there are, um, we're aware of moves afoot in the UK, which we're involved with, looking at just changing the company's ads completely. It's essentially hardwire the equivalent of the B Corp language into Section 172 of the Companies Act. So that it goes straight in. The, the default position will be you'll have that wording in um, and be bound by it. So it won't mean that every English company suddenly becomes a B Corp, but it will mean that you sort of create this paradigm shift away from shareholder primacy. It's re- it's just so interesting to see the rate of change um, yeah. and as usual sort of law and regulation following, um, you know, what, what's actually happening in the in, in the market um, um, and, and, and thinking about, you know, well, for, for the longer term, what's the structural build that's actually necessary to support, you know, this 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 change and, and way of working as um, as we as we go forward? Well, look, um, thank you both very very much. It's it's been it's been great. 
Um, and thank you everybody else for, for, for joining us. Um, and um, um, I think what remains is for us to say goodbye and thank you and look forward to seeing you next thank time. You, the Mishcon Academy Digital Sessions. To access advice for businesses that is regularly updated, please visit mishcon.com. <laughs>